Would you like to be the CEO of your life? Would you like to have high level skills like those big accomplished CEOs of those big businesses and have those skills for yourself and accomplish high level for your life and your home and your work and your family and yourself and everyone around you. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get those great big skills that we associate with the big leaders, but you can really have for yourself. So I first want to welcome people who are joining us. I see Eileen is with us and I see her hearts coming up and that just raises our spirit and makes our community come close together, even though we may be spread apart. So I want to say with joy, hello to everybody joining us. Hello to Eileen and your family. And Eileen wrote in the comments, hi, Dr. Ellen. So I am saying back with joy and love, hello, Eileen. And hello to everybody else joining us. I love to ask people to write in the comments as well. Whether you're watching this live or on replay, hello to everybody or hello to me. So we feel like we're reaching out to each other and building this wonderful supportive community for each other. So I am so charged and energized uh, and excited to talk to you about this topic tonight. Because why should only CEOs have these skills? Imagine all we can accomplish if everybody had those high skills. So for those of you who may be new, I'm Dr. Ellen, and I love to help people reach their best in their lives so that you can accomplish all you want at work, at home, with your family, with relationships, with your kids, for yourself, everything in life. And today we're going to talk about 10 skills that can help you do that. I want to give you a little bit about the history on this. So I had been working with an executive teaching them about some skills in executive coaching. I sometimes help executives who are already up in the high level, sometimes those who are trying to build their way up. And one day I thought, gee, these skills can help everyone. Why shouldn't everyone have those skills? And that is how my program on CEO executive skills for everyone was really born and was really developed. So I'm gonna tell you about a lot of these skills and how they contribute to happiness and success and accomplishment. And I'm gonna suggest that you have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil in front of you, or you can record this on your computer. And for each skill, I'm gonna ask you to record whether you feel you have this skill or whether you need it. Are you all ready? So let's get started. I'm so excited for all of you who are joining me and all that you can accomplish. So number one, when I think of CEOs, CEOs have steadfast confidence. They don't sit and think when something comes up, I can't handle this, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. That's not how they became CEOs. Whatever comes along, they think clearly, they figure out a pathway, and they move forward. One thing about confidence is it gives us optimism and it gives us energy to move forward. We're not weighed down by doubt, but by those self thoughts that bring us down. It gives us freedom and energy to move forward, no matter what the challenge is. So why is confidence important? Again, it gives you a sense of control, a sense of power, a sense of momentum. So I am going to ask you for skill number one, confidence. What is your meter? What is your self-assessment for number one, confidence? Do you need help or do you feel no help needed on this skill? So record that for number one. 
I'll be happy to go over your results with you. Number two is goal mastery and planning. So CEOs are experts at looking what needs to be done to create goals and charting a course to get there. But goal setting is important and is applicable to anybody. You don't have to be a CEO to want to have goals and to want to know how to reach them. So I don't want my people to sit back as passive observers in life, just waiting for goals to accomplish. Uh, for people who want to lose weight someday or create a new job for themselves or start a new hobby or start a new habit. So I talk about setting power goals that provide momentum and that help you feel confident. And so I want you to think about your confidence level of setting goals and planning and moving forward. What is your level of confidence? Do you need more help in setting goals and reaching them? Or do you feel you're doing fine on goal setting and goal reaching? Again, I'm going to ask you to keep track of that for number two. And number three, let's move ahead. Number three is focus and attention, or what I call the focus bonus of CEOs. Now, CEOs, like all of us, have a hundred things, or it feels like a hundred things that they want to accomplish, but they're able to focus precisely on what they're doing in the moment, and they don't get caught up, they don't get bogged down or stressed by all the other things on their mind. They're able to focus on what they're doing. Again, it's what, they, what I call the CEO focus bonus. When you have a lot on your mind, it's what I call the brain jungle. Part of it is multitasking when we're trying to do a zillion things at once. And it re really contributes to stress. It cuts down on our efficiency. But CEOs conserve their attention and their time and their energy. They have attention like laser attention. They can really zoom in on what they're doing and they work efficiently without distractions. So what is your focus level in your life? And I want you to rate this also. One is you, you might need help. Do you need help with focus, with zooming in on your attention? Are you full of the brain juggling? Or are you really clear on focusing in on what you need to do? Make a note of your metric, of your self-assessment on that. And let's move on to four. And that is stress management. Now, CEOs, as we all know, have a lot on their plates. There are a lot that they want to accomplish, a lot of things that they want to do but they don't live in the stress cycle of being bogged down and burdened by all those things. They don't live in the stress cycle of being burdened by challenges because that wastes time, it wastes energy. They just move forward with plans. And stress is often really a learned habit. You can break and crack that habit easily with some help. I teach people to do that all the time easily. So what is your self-assessment on your stress level and stress management? For stress management, do you need help with that? Or have you got that all covered? Make a note of your self-assessment for stress management. Got it covered or do you need help on that? And let's move on to five, the fifth CEO skill that's really important. And that is number five, time optimization. Notice I didn't say time management because we all have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We don't manage time. We optimize how we use it. We can change how we use our time. We can change our relationship with time. And CEOs handle a lot. And they know how to budget time. 
There's an art and science of handling time and CEOs have mastered it. They know all the strategies, they know all the time hacks, they know all the shortcuts, they know all the managing, managing skills of time. So what is your self-assessment of time? Do you feel you need help with skills for time optimization? Or do you feel you, you use time fine? Which do you note down on your paper for time optimization? And let's move on to number six. So number six is resilience, perseverance, and persistence. So CEOs don't get frustrated or discouraged when there's a challenge or when there's a plan that's not working out immediately. They know it takes time to build success. They know it takes momentum and energy. And they have what I call stick to itiveness. They stick to it, they're patient. They build long-term success. They forge ahead. They have resilience. They're not afraid of challenges and they don't fall apart. They don't ask why did this happen or how did this happen or why am I having trouble? They just move forward. And remember, and I like to remind people this, that courage is not the absence of fear or discomfort. It's moving forward even under conditions where you might feel fear or challenged. They don't feel immobilized. They move ahead. So what is your level of resilience for your life? Do you need more help with resilience, with moving forward when you have challenges? Or are you fine with resilience? Do you just slide forward when something comes up? This is so much fun working on this with all of you. And I can't wait for those of you who move forward to build these skills and all of the accomplishment that you're going to get. So let's talk about number seven. Number seven is flexibility and adaptability. So times change and needs change, especially when challenges occur. And CEOs are able to pivot. They can adapt, they can respond to changes and triggers for change. For example, when COVID hit, they were able, the, the best CEOs were able to make the big changes that they had to for their company to accommodate the needs of COVID and the pandemic. Sometimes when there are challenges, we need to be creative. We need to be flexible and adaptive, especially when there are challenges. So what is your self-assessment for being flexible and adaptive? Are you very flexible? Do you adapt well when you need to make changes? Or do you find it difficult to be flexible, to be adaptable in times of challenge? I'm gonna have you note that down and let's move ahead to number eight. Number eight is relationships. And CEOs are really good at building and bonding relationships with all types of people. And a lot of people think you need to be extroverted to do this, but a lot of the great CEOs will describe themselves as introverted. They're just skilled at building relationships, at bonding with people, at showing people that they're interested, concerned, and caring. And of course, we want that at work, but we also want that in our families and with our personal lives. We want to be able to show that we are caring and loving and that we're facilitative in our relationships. There are relationships with our partners and our, our spouses, our children, our friends. There are relationships with our work people, um, with our community people. So what is your level of confidence in building and bonding relationships with the people around you? Do you feel you're great in building relationships, all types of relationships, or do you think it could help you to learn to build and enhance and elevate your building relationships with people in your lives? 
Make sure you note that for number eight. And let's talk about number nine. And nine is leadership. So leaders, great leaders like CEOs lead with inspiration and enthusiasm and optimism and motivation. And I'm not going to go through and mention all the characteristics of good leaders now. I can do a separate uh, program on building leadership skills. But I do want you to think about what leaders have that can really be important and help you as a leader, whether it's a leader at work, even if you're not an administrator, you're leading your area of your work, or whether you're leading your family as the head of your family. So effective CEOs are also good role models. They know how to encourage people to lead with good skills in their lives as well. And I work with executives as large at large companies as well as parents trying to be effective, strong leaders at home with their families. So let's talk about your self-assessment of leadership. Do you need, would you like more leadership skills or do you feel you've got leadership down, pat down? And let's move on to number 10. So number 10 is that strong, effective CEOs are lifelong learners. They're always trying to build new, better, stronger skills. And they're used to, they're not afraid of reaching out for help, of calling in for consultants, mentors, experts, advisors, people to help them in their lives, to better their skills, to reach more in their lives. Again, they're always lifelong learners, whether it's something for their company to move their company ahead, whether it's something for their family that they want for their family, or whether it's something they want for their, themselves to build success. And again, they don't sit back and wait for things happen. They don't feel stressed and, and put a burden on themselves and try to figure everything out on their own. They're really good at acting and moving forward and calling in experts. And the best way to have knowledge is to bring knowledge in for yourselves. So I hope that you can build all 10 of these skills for yourselves and be like CEOs of your own life. I'm so excited about this and what you can do to move forward and build your best life if you have these skills. Now, if you want to be like a CEO and reach out for an expert in this, if you'd like my help as a consultant to learn how to build these skills of goal reaching, of confidence, of leadership, and all the 10 skills that I talked about, I am happy to help you work to build them you need to take the first step though. So you need to, to do that. I'm just gonna simply ask you to schedule a phone appointment with me. I will be happy to talk to you and figure out how you can up these skills in your life, uh, up your success and happiness and joy. These 10 skills are really a game changer. And I can't wait for those of you who are going to move forward and do that. Uh, I can help you with, your be, with the Be Your Best program that I have. Um, and I'm teaching people within this program how this can help you at work to reach higher levels of success, how it can help you with your family, how it can help you with your own personal success and personal growth. So, so again, feel free to reach out to me uh, in this, uh, in the recording of this, I'll try to have my calendar link put into this recording. If you don't have it in front of you now, in our group, you can find the link to my calendar. I would really be joyous to help you reach your best in your life. As always, I love sharing empowerment strategies. So I will be back here next week again 
with another topic, another empowerment topic to help you move forward. Uh, I encourage you, if you're watching this in Facebook, to come in during the group, during the week to read and see all of the recommendations that I'm going to post. Make sure you're back here again next Sunday at, this, at our same time. If you are watching this in YouTube, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you will be alerted when there are new topics and you can come and watch our future topics in here as well. And again, I love sharing empowerment strategies. I can't wait to see the success that you are going to have if you choose to move forward and up your 10 skills. So I look forward to seeing you back here again. Let's talk again soon.